Masakane. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thanks. And how are you? I'm fine, thank you. So, um, you have just told me that you're washing the dogs, and I see you have a business, a, a pet, wa uh, is it a dog washing that you do? It, it is the pet wash. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yes. So, and it's a business that I just opened uh, while on lockdown. Oh, okay. And um, how is the business going? Well, it's been doing good. It's been doing good. Uh, mm -hmm. Opening a business while, you know, when you not know that you're going to be end up in, in something and just for the love of pets and the couple of dogs that I have, I decided to open a pet wash. And well, it has been doing pretty much well and it's, it's going very well. Good. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's easy to do a business if you love what you do. So that's also Indeed. an advantage. Yeah. It makes but, it, yeah. Sorry, it makes everything easier because you're doing for the love of, of, of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. But I I understand that your your uh you have another love and that is uh singing. Yes, of course. Uh yeah. singing so, yeah, singing has been quite uh something that has just been uh all around me growing up and into uh from school. To, to even working for a production company. It has been something, you know, when something just whatever you, you get into trying to to, uh, to, to to learn something new, but music is gonna always be with you in whatever that you're doing. Well, it has been one of the things that I love and enjoy doing on a daily basis. Hmm. And how did you start in music? <laughs> Uh, I went to I went to a music, I started in church. I grew up to a choir singing church. And growing up uh, from primary school, I did not sing. I did not focus in choirs and singing. And then uh, from high school, then I started going back to music and choirs. And from then, I started doing master classes. And then I went to do uh, auditions around here in Cape Town. Okay. And from doing that, I have been performing around in Cape Town as well. And also being in part of the show that is called uh, by Richard Loring. Uh, it's called uh, Capsa Stories, Capsa is in Cape Town. So mm -hmm. stories that happen uh, around Poor Cup and all around uh, to the Cape uh, Peninsula Point. And from then, then I started working with Isango in 2013. And I have been part of Isango and Sambo all this time. Really? Um, uh, but uh, tell me, the, you are where you are in Cape Town. You are near Cape Town. Yes, I, I stay in a place called uh, Mandela Park, which is called uh, Kailicha. It's right here in Cape Town. Oh, yeah, I know Kailicha. And um, okay, and now, and you're singing with this ensemble. Uh -huh. Yes, I am. Uh, Just say the name I've been again Isango Ensemble. Isango. Yes. Okay, yeah. And and how many uh, singers are you? Uh, we It depends on the production that we're doing. Uh, but the, the, I think the minimum number, we usually uh, 14 going up to 30 to 34 and going up. Uh, most of the production, you always get a, a middle number of, of 30 members that will be working around the production. Uh, depending if maybe we're doing an 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 adaptation an adaptation of uh, of of opera where we take it and create our own story of how the township is taking that theme of what is happening on that uh, particular opera, and then we change the orchestral music by our music director, our Monday to Sunday that changes and uh, and take all the music into our African marimba, and we play the orchestra in those in those marimbas. Oh, you take the classical music and you change it so that it's more traditional music. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, okay. and tell it in our story and how we live and, and everything that is happening around here in Cape Town. Wow, that sounds amazing. So yeah, you really, think... so you would take, so for example, a, an opera and and relate it then to to what you say, what's going on around you. Yes, for instance, uh, they did an opera, I think that was before I started working with the company, they did uh, Come In, Be They Come In. Mm -hmm. They took Be They Come In and, and, made, and made it Ukamen Ekayelich. 
which is Okamen that is based here in Kairicha, and the stories on how uh, how the gypsy girls would be uh, if you you think and see our normal basic life of Kailicha and all of those uh, so all those characters are exactly how they simply as they, as they are but on our daily lives that we live around here this sounds wonderful i would love to see that it is it is really amazing you when you when you actually uh you hear the tune of the marimas that plays from the from the open shore when it starts and and you simply get almost pretty much everything that you will get from them a normal locker shop but right, into into our into our beautiful marimba yeah. amazing and and but but you uh, were you classically trained as a classical i was not no i was not classically trained i only went to a music high school mm-hmm. and then i started so i started traveling tourism and in in college and i have a diploma with that but then i decided to go with the music oh okay as a kind of yeah and now is it is it um for when you change the opera like that so that it's more relatable for for the people where you live and and for the shall we say real south africans um is that bringing more people to the opera do you think or more people to this type of um music uh, i think our, our our traditional music is not that much far from opera music where really? you get the similar sound it, it 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 as much as it fascinates us to get uh, and hear classical music or opera music you get the similar sound of how we sing our folk songs and most of our traditional songs where it 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 gets pretty much easier for us to be able to sing pretty much the same way that uh, the uh, the western uh, musical is, is is sounding in our ear by the time you get to go and learn and how the music is being pronounced you already have it in your in your uh, in in your vocab of how to to be able to to sing those things so it, it pretty much gets uh, a bit easier so when we go and take the music and 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 transposing to what we are doing and then changing the words but you still hear the sound and pretty much uh, all the all the the things that are structured on the opera or on the classical uh, music, musical that is is being is been composed it's pretty much the same thing nothing will change it's just oh, really? the language and the, uh, indeed yeah and um how how is it in in the in Kailicha for example are there um uh, possibilities for children to say also be in choirs and be exposed to music or where do you do these performances uh the kids i think from here from the early age now they get more exposed in 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 western and classical music on an early age because there's an Estherford and competitions that happens in 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 school from primary school to the secondary and high school all the way and then you get to decide when you want to do a, a career in music where you can go to the university of cape town and 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 and, and have a venture in in music meaning that uh now more than anything than the old of the old days where you didn't know that there are courses about music uh there is uh, we also have uh I think uh Arts Cape and Cape Town Opera also have uh, other things that goes to to the primary schools and teach kids. We also in Sango have been uh going to schools around uh Kailicha and Cape Town and getting more younger kids. We also had a production where we took uh, a couple of kids and we toured with them with doing a, we were doing a book uh by uh Johnny Steinberg who which was about uh a somalian that went all the way from somalia to south africa and from to, to south africa to get uh in pastures in by going to europe and in america only to find out that he could make the similar money that he was looking to do in south africa and then came to south africa and still pursued it by as a child he's been played by a two two young boys that are from one is from kailicha and one is from kugule to inyanga so we those programs are pretty much happening around than the usual days where it was so hard to be able to know much about opera know much about classical music so now there are uh, uh programs that do happen around in in Kailicha and the schools around Cape Town to 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 educate kids more about music 
Mm, but that's wonderful because I have been speaking to um, musicians and, and um, opera singers from South Africa, and they all say the same thing, that basically they started in a choir in, in school, but that this, mm -hmm. this exposure to music actually lift them out of um, uh, um, the world that they were living in. Maybe, you know, that was poverty or it was... Uh, uh, you know where it wasn't safe or whatever, and and it it's almost as if it brings it lifts you out of that, and that discipline that the children learn from singing and from taking uh, or playing an instrument, whatever you know, brings gives them another focus as well. And the best part about it, you know, that you will find most of the schools that uh, the kids when you grow up that. You will get students who are doing postgrads in universities with where with their uh, uh, musical diplomas and come back and do tutorials in, in schools to be able to help uh, also the, the the young generation to be able to approach this music because there's also uh, opera and classical categories where they will sing solos. You get to sing arias. You get to sing uh, oratorios to compete with that are uh, prescribed by the competition. So you, you get a bit, uh, we not obviously not all the schools be able to get uh, that access to those people who, but there will be a couple of schools that get our students that comes from, that are doing uh, all these BMSs from these uh, universities around uh, Cape Town and be able to help those schools to, to get more information. And then that's when the young generation gets to understand, okay, now you can actually do have a career in, in music. Although it's not that easy because uh, Cape Town doesn't have many opera houses and all. So you yeah. will get now that when people start to be establishing themselves and then you, uh, you, get, uh, you get advices that you can, you can go and explore and get to know more about uh, the adventures of opera and classical music uh, in, in, in Western countries. And then you will start to, to find uh, uh, programs that will take you to, to, to the rest of the world. Hmm. And uh, but but this is the the problem that everybody's saying is that the government in South Africa are not too eager to to sponsor all these uh, art uh, education programs. Is that true? Do it's, you find it that it's, so? Well, it, it's so difficult that uh, in 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 the in the in the in the side of arts it gets uh, a bit. Uh, more challenging from the department uh, or, or the government, you would say that uh, there isn't much that we as actors or we as singers or performers that uh, are taking care after. You know, it will it will it, it, it will surely take time. If it, if it's not happening now while we're still under the pandemic, it, it actually is going to be able to it, it it will work at some point until they realize that uh, this is a huge industry where you have uh, musicians, you have actors all around, and whenever uh, something is being thought when, when they are taking decisions, they need to make sure that uh, the rest of the country is looking at, at, at us and seeing it as, as a rest of the career that anyone can take this career and be and have a, have a life career in, 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 in art. Yeah. Because it's not only about performing in art, you will also get uh, people who are in, in stage directing, and and you will get people who are going to be in costume. You will get uh, films also on, on on the same on the same category. So it it will it will really take time until the country realizes this is uh, one of the of the huge uh, things that makes and breaks the country. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's like you say, it's not just the the singers. It's also it's everybody involved in that and and the costume and and the stage uh, settings and things like that. Now your mm -hmm. ensemble, tell me uh, more about that. So uh, are you who funds this ex uh, uh, ensemble? How do you get funding to put up these productions, for example? Uh, the company has got a director, uh, Mark Donford May. Uh, Mark Donford May is the director of the company, which uh, is, is, is amazing. Uh, with the things that we do, uh, it's about him. It's, uh, it's, it's, he's, the, he's the one that is directing that. And then we have Umandi Sijanjis, who is the musical director. 
uh, who, who works with us and knowing the music and everything. Uh, when we're touring, uh, I don't know, I don't know much about what is happening when we're touring. We'll get sponsors from this uh, festival that we're going to be doing uh, with this kind of production. So the bookings are also part of the company that uh, they also have their own structure that does that. As for us artists, we we mainly deal of about the music and the performing what we're doing on the company. Mm. So where do and do you perform all over the country? Do you tour over the country and perform in different theaters, for example? We mainly we mainly perform internationally, where we 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 are always in Cape Town when we're doing workshops and doing uh bringing the productions together. And then we we usually have uh, we get books bookings from uh, international companies. Uh, we on the last uh, before the pandemic we we had an American tour uh, where we went to Boston, New York. Um, we went to Chicago, uh, Champaign, also in Illinois. We went to Michigan as well. Uh, we've been we've been quite. Uh, we went also before that we went to Australia and uh, New Zealand on the same tour. Uh, in one of the festivals that they were doing, and then after before that we went to to Norway. We were in London at the Royal Opera House. Uh, we doing we were, while we were doing, I think we were doing uh, a Man of Good Hope and then SS Mandy, two of the productions that we, we last did uh, on our on our last uh, uh, tour. And we were planning another European tour before the lockdown came and the pandemic hit. Really? So. Uh, uh, we are really hopeful uh, that everything will be fine and so that we can get back to to our daily lives and, and do what we love. Yeah. Well, I hope you come to Vienna. And, and ah, come. I hope so. Yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> that would be Great. wonderful. I would love to see that. But how do the audiences in, in Europe, for example, in America, who, who, um, who don't know the Kailicha, life how do they respond to to the opera uh, uh from people here when they respond to opera they because what we do when we're doing uh, most of the productions we also infuse uh, our african songs where in between the scenes where you will get a scene change and then you will get an african song and you'll see the oh, scene okay. changing you in view the african song and it makes it it makes more people uh it makes it more interesting to everyone that uh, how do you how do you you, know, you were not expecting that something like that is going to happen and then you get to hear a tune that will stay in your mind forever on just this one production and uh, people around the world are also fascinated by that where if you're singing uh, let's say you're singing Queen of the Night before the Queen of the Night you hear an African song that comes in the background and already the 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 orchestra the orchestra that is also on the Queen of the Night is already starting before the song is about to start. By the time it starts, you're already into the thing because um, this particular South African song just took you to, to that. And after that, you'll get another one. And then over oh, dance in between the, for instance, if we have a, uh, an act where it's gonna be, gonna be uh, uh, dancers that are gonna be doing that. For instance, come in, you will get, uh, I think uh, when the gypsies are coming back and there is, a dance where that happens, and then we take those Western dance and make and make them our own. We dance African dances, where you feel uh, you you hear more of the chamber drum plays than the normal drum that you hear, and the tune will be much more different. But the same music, but now you're getting extra beats or extra tone of what the African uh, normal beat goes. So people uh, take it very well where uh, you know exactly it's an, adapt it's an adaptation that is going to be happening and the storyline is still the same and it's mm -hmm. always good whatever uh production that you're watching you know exactly how uh the um, tamino is going to end up on, on 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 with pamina but every time you see a scene that will that will get you like whoa the director here was amazing while doing this you know um, that's what we do we we try and make it uh more modern with the way that we live that story you know uh that's how we i would i would say because i go to church i'll say that's how the bible was written we still live the bible but now we are living it on our daily life mm. so it, it's uh it's almost as if it's also a little bit educational uh, yeah. for people to to uh, understand your culture as well do you think 
Yes, very much, very much. We we try as as in, in our culture that you you hear, for instance, when we are doing the SS Mendy. SS Mendy is one of the South African stories that uh, is not much told in South Africa, where uh, troops from all around South Africa uh, went to help uh, the British on World War uh, World War uh, World War Two or the One. I'm not sure. Uh, and then when they got there, they didn't realize that they 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 were, they thought they were going there to to help and fight with them on the war. But then when they got when they got there, only to realize that they were only uh, taken from South Africa to dig trenches. You know, it's so mm-hmm. it, it, it's a bad story. And when when, when the ship was wrecked uh, on the water, uh, I think 80% of the South Africans could not swim because they are coming from inland. They've never been into places where they can swim on the sea. And it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, touching story. But getting more people to understand that story, we thought that before we told you we were going to do a preview in South Africa. And people started to come, which was fully booked. And we had to extend uh, the preview into a, a running show because we were, like, we were left with two weeks and we had to perform all that two weeks before we started to go and preview and, and premiere the, the, the production. So that we, we, we try and strive more on getting all these stories that... Uh, are supposed to be there that that needs to be told, but now not only in the way that we we do it best in African music, but we can also take uh, relating stories and adapt them and make them our and make them our own. Mm. And I think the art is such a wonderful way to tell stories, you know, through art, um, to tell stories, and it, and and it's received in a different way as if you just, you know, um, write it in a paper or in a book. Uh, well, no, that's also art, but what I mean, if, if you do it in a performing way, I think this is also for people, they they understand it better, maybe, because it's so visual and it's so um, so filled with with the music and the acting and the and and all that's going on on stage. It, it really does because what we, we, we only have one stage. And our stage setup is is a rake. It's a rake, and it's looking down. And you would see that when the ensemble is there, everyone is there. And behind the, if you could, uh, if you can, make it, you you will see there's a shack. It's a shack that is made, and whatever. And the setup is it, it just gets you to 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 your mind to imagine everything that we do. You see what we're doing by not just. Uh, putting stuff on stage, getting you to, to see it by more of the props, but the imagination will run to you. Uh, I remember we were doing uh, uh, Midsummer Night, uh, Benjamin Britten's Midsummer Night Dream. Mm-hmm. And, and in, to us, we took the fairy tales and made it uh, how we, uh, you know, a fairy is a fairy when you look at it on TV. But from us, if you see a fairy, you think of a gigolosh. It's something that is called Tigalosha that we have. So we yeah. will show you that now this is what is happening. And then you see, oh, if, if a fairy and, and, and can manipulate someone in this magic, and then those kind of things that we know, that's what Tigalosha will be, it's got, it's got a spirit also that sort of like, um, that will give you something and then that you will do that. So those spells come to there. So it makes it, it's, it's something that you can relate in whatever that you're doing. So we, we do those kind of things. In our theater, you'll find things like that that make sense to you than just going back and trying to understand when a prince was holding a sword, how he, he killed that monster. That monster can be anything. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, I, I really would so love to see that and, and so love to see you perform. Do you have um, some online things that, that's available to see? Do you have YouTube? Um, um, YouTube or so? On YouTube, on YouTube, you will get uh, Isango and Isango ensemble with more uh, of, of the videos and previews uh, uh, that uh, the shows that we've been doing. Uh, you will get that under Isango ensemble, and yeah. then everything will appear. For myself, yeah. I do have a couple of videos as well uh, of myself uh, performing and some of the videos with me and my pet wash. That will you you touch oh, okay. on, under my name, Masakana so that you can you Oh, I will have a look there. I think it's wonderful that you do this pet wash as well, and that you um, but uh, you know that you that you have these two 
two passions that you can can live your life with you know and doing that yes it is amazing it is amazing you know uh, music doesn't only end uh with me as a performer it, it goes pretty much a long way that uh in, in whatever song that you sing you are telling a story uh, there's a story behind of what you're saying on on, on there and my pet wash also it, 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 i feel like i'm telling a story i am i am i am telling a, an opera over here that this is where it started i had these three dogs and i decided to keep on washing them i wanted them to, to be clean all the time to smell good and i felt like if people also could be able to to get this kind of these their own pets to be clean and smelling good you will see the love that you have for this dog and you enjoy more time with the pet and yeah. i started to, to do that let's, let's let's clean them let's see how people behave when they get to to see their pets clean and then on a daily basis and that's a huge story to tell yeah and do people really um get that i mean do they do they um understand what you are doing they 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 pretty much understand it very well i think with uh with media in our days that can come forth and and then and, and like your story and people following of what you're doing it got a bit more uh it, it got a more exposure with yeah. uh newspapers covering my story uh and also going to tvs uh uh tv news national news tvs and got uh, a couple of internationals as well and it, oh, it, it wow. turned a bit better. yeah it's amazing uh it turned a bit better i've got more internationals and also went to reality shows and tell more people about that and mm. most especially they want me to sing also you know this is not only about the pet wash yeah. they go together this guy is an opera singer and decided to have this business and it's working and with that i sing uh with people that come and clean their pets we enjoy that and, uh, when we're having a good day you know so mm-hmm. music will always be there songs will always be there we're always going to be telling stories and you know i think the dogs feel that as well i think the dogs sense you as well because dogs do sense people very well so i think they yeah that's true that's true they do <laughs> <laughs> so they they um so they probably enjoy coming to you looking forward to to come to you yeah you you create a relationship with uh with the with, with pets that especially the ones that uh, that are regular coming uh you you create a relationship where you know when when they come they will get goodies i always have uh pet donators that come and donate uh uh goodies food uh leashes uh blankets for dogs and even kennels and then i will get to the community people whenever my clients come they will get something very nice yeah. that is coming so uh it's amazing things that are happening also on this i think because i i think i work with audiences and how people think of what you're doing and yeah. enjoy you telling your story it's easier for people to listen to me when i'm speaking about what is happening yeah and mostly it's more on the community because there's never been something like this that has uh uh washing pets uh, on a regular yeah. basis and taking care beyond what you're doing so it's mm-hmm. something that is exciting as well oh that is so wonderful um i really admire you for doing that and i think that is so great that you do that but um masakane i that was so lovely to talk to you and i hope Thank to talk you. to you again when you have when lockdown is over um in south africa and you start performing again it would be very uh, lovely to um to hear more about what you are doing and the performances you are doing and um i don't know if it's possible to speak to your director as well okay uh, i can now uh, we can talk about that and then i'll arrange that for you that will be amazing yeah because that would be great because i i speak to a lot of south african artists because i want to highlight a little bit what is going on in south africa in the arts i think it's it's great that we can just show the world what goes on in south africa all the talent in south africa you know <laughs> i have to because i'm i'm also a south african so i have to be i have to be Ooh, nice. uh, Yeah, I have to be loyal to my country and my people. Yeah. So if you want to come when you visit uh, Austria or be in Vienna, we will be able to to meet and come watch one of the productions that we have. That, yeah, that would be so great and when I come to South Africa, I would so love to come and see and watch what you are doing. That would be so wonderful. 
Yeah. Well, so I'll, I'll, I'll send you everything that is happening around you. Masakane, thank you so much. Do I say your name you. right? Yes, it's, it's so amazing that you got my name and pronounced it very right for the first time. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, true South African. It's my South African blood. <laughs> yeah, yes. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. thank you so much and speak to you soon. Awesome. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.